With me now, economist and author Ben Stein. Ben, welcome as always. Do you see Hillary Clinton's ideas as growing towards a bigger government? I see her ideas as completely nutty. I mean, I look at them, I don't understand. This is my God, this woman and I were classmates at Yale Law School together. Where was she when they were teaching us? Anyway, th this, uh, th the thing that I'm scared of is that she may really believe that there's enough money in taxing the super rich to pay for a free college education for everybody who feels like having one. She may really believe that somehow there are enough workers out there for these giant green energy projects. Look, if these projects are so great, if they're such a wonderful help, why didn't Obama do them? He's been president for the last seven years. Who's she running against? Is she running against Bush still? Is she running against uh, Trump? The last president who has been for seven and a half years, Barack Obama, if there are all these great green jobs out there that needed to be done, why didn't he do them? So, Ben, let me ask you a cynical question. What if she was just saying these kinds of things at the DNC where Bernie Sanders was sitting, where all of his supporters were, and they were protesting? Meaning, if she is going to have a chance to win, as she sees it, she has to keep a very progressive group on her side. Well, I think there's a, the, the whole thing is so cynical, it's unbelievable. I mean, the, the whole green paying jobs thing, gigantic subsidy, taking away jobs from coal miners and oil rig workers. Well, she had to correct that, subsidies. right? She had to correct that on the record. Uh, she be she, well, she, well, she better correct it. She's not, but she hasn't corrected it yet. The whole thing is just a giant boondoggle for college kids and other supporters of, of Bernie Sanders, a gigantic boondoggle for the Al Gore super rich uh, green energy type people. It has no connection with reality. There is no giant unemployment labor force out there of highly skilled workers. Yes, there are unemployed people out there, but highly skilled people who can do complex green energy jobs, they aren't there. We have a labor shortage in America, not a huge amount of skilled unemployment. She doesn't seem to understand that. We have a labor shortage of skilled workers. Well, we certainly do. What do you think Trump would do about that? Well, I don't know that he wants to do anything much about it, to tell you the truth. And I accept he wants to end all this regulation. It's an interesting thing. But we economists know that there's only one pure drag on the economy. You can have high taxes or low taxes, but the pure drag is unnecessary regulation. And this is what the Democrats love, is unnecessary regulation. And they've got an awful lot of it going on. She obviously wants to have a great deal more of it going on. She wants the era of big government to be the biggest ever. It is terrifying, and it's terrifying to me that she doesn't get the reality of the fact that taxing the corporations, which she's endlessly going after, means taxing stockholders who are saving through corporate stock ownership to pay for their retirement. So, I mean, if she said, look, I'm going to tax retired people more, nobody would like that very much. But she's too cunning to do that. So, Ben, let me ask you this, because when you talk about regulation, if you listen to bankers, they say we have been over-regulated to the point where we can barely They're run a business. Wildly. And I want to ask you what wildly. this means for stress tests on European banks, because we're just beginning to get the information. So the weakest position in general, I'm painting broad brush, I'm not going to go through all the names, but Italy's banks seem the weakest. Ireland's not too far behind. But how do you see this as affecting the U.S. economy, even if some of these banks are weaker than previously thought? It's not going to affect the U.S. economy at all. The amount of the U.S. gross domestic product, which is dependent on loans from or to European banks, is absolutely trivial. It's not a thing we have to worry about for even one second. I'd be worried a lot more about whether my pizza that I take out pizza is warm than whether or not European banks are passing their stress tests. It's just not a big deal for us. It might be a big deal for people in Ireland. It might be a big deal for people in Italy. It's not a big deal for people in the United States. It's like Brexit. Everybody says, oh, the sky is falling, it's Brexit. It's just not a big deal so for ben, us. So, Ben, maybe for people who don't know, obviously, the system as well as you do, I mean, the idea of the stress test so it was to see if essentially banks have enough cash to withstand a kind of economic shock. So you're saying, and they didn't do, on purpose, pass or fail because they didn't want investors freaking out, for lack of a better term, but even saying that, okay, a few of these banks actually would not make it through on their own in the next well, crisis, that doesn't bother you. 
it, it isn't cash, really. It's a question of whether they have a certain kind of asset that's a very, very secure kind of asset in case their insecure kinds of assets deteriorated. And it's not really a crisis level situation, even though they didn't grade it on a pass fail situation. They didn't say that any country is in danger of economic collapse because of the situation of the banks. And anyway, every country in Europe and the European Union has a central bank. They can bail out any one of these banks. We wouldn't have had our recession and our financial crisis of 2008 if we'd bailed out Lehman Brothers. The governments can bail out any of these banks. They have plenty of time to make the banks shore up their reserves. It's not a crisis at all. It's, as I say, more important whether or not you get fresh sushi tonight. All right, Ben. We know what's on your mind. Sounds good. Ben Stein, thank you as always. <laughs>